Hi, it's Tom from BKM Nutrition and, and today I want to talk about what to do if you get on the scales on a Monday morning and you've gained weight, you've not got the result that you want uh, from the previous week. You go on the scales on the Monday morning and go, oh, it's gained weight again. Now, have you had a, a busy weekend? Have you had a, a weekend that you're not proud of? And then getting on the scales is that sort of confirmation of the fact that you've messed up royally? Or is it the case if you've got on the scales on Monday morning and you think you've done everything right and they're still not showing? a difference so there's a couple of options here there's a couple of uh, variables which I want to discuss and I call it the mo Monday morning demotivation it's uh, you see all these Instagram uh, people and going oh yeah look at my Monday morning motivation here's a picture of me with abs and my supplement thing and uh, and then some some phrase that they've um, cut and pasted from Google or some, or some bird with their ass out going oh yes yeah, philosophy you think yes okay great that's just to get likes uh, you don't really know what that means maybe um, so what we're going to talk about here is the Monday morning demotivation. It's the getting on the scales moment. Get on the scales go, ah, oh, ah, that's not what I wanted. I've gained a kilo. And this is quite common. And the reason it's common is because what people do, um, let's say general people work Monday to Friday, nine to five, whatever. You know, I know most people now because of internet and online and stuff work various hours, but talk about the average daily person is still that set up as nine to five Monday or whatever, eight to four Monday. So during the week when they're when they're going to uh, their work, they've got a routine, they eat a certain diet or whatever, there may be a bit of, you know, here and there, there, and they go to the gym as well as that. So, so they're in a routine Monday to Friday. We get to the weekend, most people have an out of routine routine on the weekend where they are uh, maybe seeing their family, their kids. So I see my my son every other weekend and uh, and we go out and do adventures and stuff like that. So my my every other weekend is different on the weekends I don't have him I generally sit here and make memes and, uh, and videos like this so it might have a, have a different routine and most of us do have different routines when we are on the weekend and we do in the week and even if we work on the weekends we do have slightly different routines because it's the whole feel of the weekend is different you know we're we're sort of geared into right we're gonna eat more on the weekend in the evening get a takeaway whatever else go out for a meal we're more likely to do that on the weekend and or have a lie-in that sort of thing than we are during the week. So there is that case of sometimes we are eating a bit more on the weekend and also we're being a little bit underactive on the weekend. Now I know if you're a gym person, uh, you probably do like going to the gym on Saturday mornings, but then that's generally followed by a pig out in the evening, which is something I've seen quite a lot of. And I used to do that as well. I used to, when I was competing for bodybuilding shows, I used to go training in the morning, smash the cardio, and then just like pig out all day on carbs, you know. Um, so that was just something I, I did. It was uh, part of my adventures as a bodybuilder. Uh, but but generally that is how people, people um, behave. And so what happens is they lose weight during the week, they drop body fat consistently during the week. And then on the weekend when they've overeaten and not done as much activity, what generally tends to happen is they're not so much gain a load of fat because that's not really, you know, it's not really possible to gain a ton of, fat, even a kilo worth of fat um, within um, within uh, like two days. You'd have to eat something like nearly eight, 9,000 calories over what your maintenance is. So if you're an average person, that means you've got to eat over the weekend, you might have a calorie um, average amount of say uh, 5,000 for maintenance. So you've got to eat another like 8,000 calories on top of that over the weekend. To gain um, to gain the kilo of body fat. So when you look at on the scales in the morning, it's like oh, two kilos heavier. It's probably not body fat. In fact, I'll, I'll put a, a fat weight. If I had a bag of fifties in my hand, I would I would say I'll, I'll put a wage on it. It's not body fat. It's most most likely going to be food volume, water retention, some glycogen retention in the muscles. Yeah, there's going to be a little bit of fat there, but certainly not enough to elicit a change on the scales that's massively significant. It is just that fluctuation. And remember, you also have fluctuations during the week naturally anyway with water, stress, um, food volume that we're eating, all those things fluctuate. So what we need to do, and I've said this on previous videos, is to look at the average of our weight over the course of the weeks and then the months and everything else. So when I work with clients, we won't be bothering about what individual days say. We're looking at the end figure at the end of that column, which is the average change over the course of weeks and months. And actually, if you do that, if you log that, and there's a tool on my website you can go to. If you go to Beacon Nutrition forward slash social links, there's actually a link in there that says weight loss tracking sheet, which is a Google sheet so you can just download and put your stuff in and track it. Um, if you do that, you'll be able to see actually, you, you'll have different trends on the week. So you might say that Wednesday, you're always heavier. And if you look at your schedule, you'll see there's a reason why that's always heavier or lighter or whatever. Um, and you'll see that Monday, you're probably lighter or heavier and then get towards the end of the week and you're lighter or heavier. So you'll see those trends happen, especially if you're a woman, you'll see that your weight normally goes up 
every four to five weeks uh, if you've got a regular period um, but also women tend to eat more carbs on the week before ovulation so you generally tend to get a little bit of an in increase there so there's all these trends you can see but until you're monitoring that you won't be able to see those things and of course if you're not doing that and you get on the scales monday morning you go oh they're gaining all that weight if you're not prepared for that and you don't know why that's happening it can be a thing and this and this is what happens we go into a couple of options first of all we go option one now option one is the oh look at all that i'm going to be clean on my diet this week i'm going to not have any cheats i'm not going to have any pizza or ice cream or i'm not going to do any of that sort of stuff so that's the first reaction people like see it and go oh no or they go online and they buy one of these ridiculous diet plans from the gurus they say yeah lose lose two kilos in 10 days sorts of thing you know and you go yeah i need to lose two kilos because what i gained on the weekend so i'll go and get that and then um and then they do the diet it's full of restrictive foods loads of exercise so they do lose the weight which is water glycogen and a tiny bit of fat and then they feel so crap that they actually go back uh, back and eat loads of food. I call that the prison type diet. Um, that's covered in my book, Target Lean, and one of the videos. Um, then there's option two. Option two is, oh, I gained all that weight. Um, well, that's the diet stuff then, isn't it? Let's just eat more food. And they just pile in more food for the rest of the week because they're upset about the fact that they've um, overeaten on the weekend. And actually, the irony of this is that overeating on the weekend is not really going to upset your apple cart because it's only you know probably a couple of extra thousand calories but the subsequent overeating for the next seven days yeah that does mess you up because then you actually absolutely are eating more than 10 20 000 calories surplus so then you do start to gain body fat so you're self-fulfilling your own prophecy there about the fact that you messed up your diet so there's those two options now neither of those are really um that appealing are they and actually option one is just a stopgap until you get to option two because the more you restrict yourself and the more you go and eat clean or try and be good for all these diets the more likely he's going to rescind into this option two at the end oh, i've done that every week i've got tried to eat clean it's not happened oh i might as well just give up the diet you know it's very common to have for that to happen so don't beat yourself up if that's happened to you because that's happened to me and i know about nutrition so i've, I've done it in the force so I, I absolutely know about these sort of things it can be very unnerving it can be very annoying for you so there's two options option one potentially is a sort of a plaster on a on a massive cut which is not going to help for long and an option two is just letting the blood go out so neither of those are really the options we want what about option three option three is that insert swear word happens the reason we talk about that we need to accept it okay i've had a bad weekend gained a bit of weight okay we know the reasons why we've eaten a little bit we've not done as much exercise so we know why that's happened but we're still shocked when we got on the scales in the monday morning and see that happening let's just think well okay that's happened it's happened because i ate a bit more food on the weekend however let's think this through logically i did my diet for the week or i ate well for the week i've eaten a little bit more on the weekend i'm not act not being so active i've gained a bit of weight that's just what happens you know i accept that's happened i know why it's happened so what i'm going to do is accept it's happened and i'm going to move back into what i was doing last week so although we've gone down and up for the blip if we go straight back into the diet we're going to be going down on average going remember i talked about the average of weight over the week that's what's important to measure not the fact that we've gained weight on one single day so if we can go straight back to our routine that we were doing before now hopefully this is a routine where you're eating food you like to get the body you want if you're not doing that go and read my book target lean which is on sale on amazon or watch any one of my 200 videos on youtube which will help you construct there's even one that's there, there that says how to build your ideal diet for fat loss something like that um, so that's a 30 minute walkthrough go and watch that it's totally free or buy the book um or work in my coaching program, but that's obviously a bit more expensive. So uh, if you go and do those things, if you're not doing a diet you like, um, so if you are doing a diet you like and you're following it and you are you will get results, so just go back to that because you, you're getting consistency of action. Now remember, there's six principles for an effective body change and uh, number five is consistency leads to change. So doing the same thing right 80% of the time is better than trying to get it 100% of the time. You never get it 100% of the time. No one does that. You know, we never have a perfect day at work. Our kids are never behaved, well behaved all the way through, um, all the way through the week. There's always going to be a red sock that finds its way into the whitewashing, no matter how uh, diligently you, you do that. There's always going to be that one occurrence. So these things happen. Life is not 100% accurate. Life is not 100% predictable. And so your diet is not going to be at all. So you've got to accept that fact. It's always going to be some hiccups that happen. Hiccups happen. 
go back to what you were doing. Do go back to the consistency of what you're doing before. And if you do that again and again and again, yeah, you'll be going up and down, up and down through the, through the course of the weeks, but you'll be moving in the right direction. You'll see the trend line come down if you're tracking and you'll see that progress is happening. Now, the way I like to analogize this, because some people get also a bit um, um, hard to, to get this, is that say you're driving somewhere, to go on holiday, for example, and you come to a roadblock and there's a detour. Well, you don't turn around and go home because you've hit the roadblock. You go around the detour and of course you might take a bit longer to get there but you're still moving in the right direction you've been held up a little bit it's going to take you longer to get there but you're still moving in the right direction it's foolhardy to just turn the car around and go right that's the holiday stuff we're not going to do that anymore we're going to go back home and have a holiday at home and do all the things we we're doing before um you wouldn't do that so why do people do it on their diets because they, there's all or nothing approach to diet so the diet's either good or it's bad but it's never good or bad it's just we're doing as best we can. 80% of the time is better than trying to end aim for 100% of the time. And I always say to my clients, if you can hit 80%, perfect. That's where we wanna be because we, we're human, we want a little bit of flexibility. We're gonna go off the rails every now and again, that happens every now and again. I'm a nutritionist, I coach people on nutrition. Every now and again, I'll be sat on my sofa back there, eating Pringles and Haribos and playing Nintendo. I might do that every now and again because that's just what I like to do, to relax. And so, and afterwards the day after, oh, I should have done some videos or I should have done some emails or something, but actually having a day off is actually quite nice sometimes, you know? So, you know, we're not all perfect. And, and if anyone tells you they've got a perfect diet, they haven't, they're just behind the scenes, not on Instagram, eating donuts and then crying until afterwards. So don't ever think about anything on Instagram as perfect because it never is. You know, the people who promote, oh, I'm always eating clean or whatever, you know, even get these, these, um, these sort of vegan preachers who end up being ousted or outed as being like meat eaters. That's another thing that happens. You know, don't believe everything you read on social media or see on social media. It's all there to put you to, maybe to sell you something, to, to get you buying into what they're selling. Um, nobody's perfect. And I've worked with enough people to know that nobody is perfect. And I've worked with some really strict bodybuilding people and they always have a wobble. You know, they always have this instance where they just go off the rails. So don't ever think that your diet and you going off the rails is because you're a bad person or you're bad at dieting or bad at losing weight or whatever, because you're not. It's just the fact that it just takes longer. It takes longer than people think. It takes longer than uh, the coach will tell you if they're trying to sell you a six week program. You know, losing weight for the long term, it takes a long time. It takes time to build up habits, it takes time to build up consistency. But the more votes you make for that, a uh, goal that you want to live, that lifestyle you want to live, the easier it will be to get there. And every time you go off the rails, the easier it will be to come back and go back onto that diet. But until you start building those habits and start making those votes for the leaner lifestyle, you won't be able to build those habits to get back to it easily. So the first week it might be and you hit 50%, second week only you hit 60%. The more you do it, the more you get into doing it, the easier it will be. But you've got to build that consistency. So don't be worried if you go offline, just accept it, move on, go back to what you're doing the previous week and you will get the results. If you want some help doing that, like I said, read my book, watch the videos, come on coaching program if you want to, you know, that's, that's a lot of money to spend if you're just here to watch videos. But the fact is, is that the help is there. Uh, I've got a lot of free help. Sign up to my email program, my email list, because I send out daily emails with useful links and advice and stuff like that. There's loads of stuff there that can help you for free. You don't have to buy things to do it. You know, buying a good program might get you there faster. If you have a coach who's a good coach, it will get you there faster. But you can do it yourself. You start laying down these little little things that you can do every single day. And start with small things. Don't try and change your trajectory 90 degrees. One degree every day will get you to where you want to be. Um, so I hope that's helped. I hope that's given you some ideas. Uh, feel free to comment below or shoot me an email if you need help with anything. Um, always happy to help, give you some tips. Um, follow me on Instagram, Tom Blackman underscore nutrition for, for daily memes and uh, irreverence and cheesecake pictures. Um, and I hope this video is helpful and I will see you on the next video.